Mark Eiking, the Liberal candidate, Sydney, Victoria. Well, there's two things we're planning on doing. One is, uh, uh, we call it the, uh, the passport. And what it does is when a student hits grade nine, uh, $1,000 goes into a kitty, a fund for them every year for four years. So that brings the fund up to at least $4,000 with some interest and change in there. So automatically if a student after post-secondary education goes to a, a, a university or, or any kind of training, they will be eligible to draw out of that. And what we see is every, for four years they will draw out at least $1,000 which will go right to their tuition. So it's fairly straightforward. Upon grade nine they get $1,000 in and after when they start first year they get $1,000 every year after. The other thing is, it's a very interesting, and our leaders talked about it, and Mr. Ignati talked about it last night in the debate, is if students go overseas and do some work for NGOs or in underdeveloped countries, a credit will be applied to their uh, student loan. So that's another really good one. So there's two ways we can help uh, students get through that burden of uh, paying high tuition. Well, first of all, when you look in our riding uh, and look at Cape Breton, because we're surrounded by the, wa the ocean, of course, I think we're one of the areas that are getting hardest hit with climate change. We see uh, sea levels. Sea levels are going up at least. They're going up at least when you look around the Bedour Lakes and around on the ocean. You see at least going up six six inches to a foot over the last just the last few years. Now, one would say that's not very much, but what, when you combine that with a, st a storm like we had last fall, we had a couple bad storms last fall, and we see what the damage caused to the breakwaters, to the shoreline, we see people losing their homes and, and dwellings. So uh, we see big damage here, and they're still not all cleaned up. Uh, we still don't have all the breakwaters fixed. So we see it front center. We are living on an island on the ocean here. We're gonna be one of the hardest hits with the global change, the climate change. We see uh, whether starting in our homes or on the global, there's two ways we're going to tackle this. Uh, we have the retrofit program now uh, put in place that will help people, that'll help people uh, redo their homes, whether it's uh, uh, solar panels or even caulking windows, doors, doing their furnaces over. That's one way to do it. But also, we have to get back engaged on the, on the international scene at these, these conferences and reduce our, our emissions more than we're doing. You're right, the dredging the harbor, that's it's ongoing. It's going to uh, evolve as it may and help with the cruise ship industry, container, container and even shipping coal in and out. So let's look at other things. Um, the biggest benefit I see coming to Cape Breton in the upcoming years is uh, the Lower Churchill Project in Newfoundland. Um, not only there's going to be thousands of jobs of construction on this, which is going to bring many of our workers that are out west. I think over 25% of Cape Breton economy is from men and women working out west. If we can get them to come back here and work in Atlantic Canada on this major project, it's going to be big. But also when you see this clean energy coming in, uh, on the, uh, coming into probably Ling Gan, it's going to create a tremendous opportunity, not only with cheaper power rates, but clean energy. We'll be able to build products, make products, well, which will have that certification of clean energy. I see Cape Breton's future. Environment's going to be one of the biggest. The spin-off from the cleaning up the terra ponds and the cleaning up of the coal fields, where we see our center of excellence in CBU, and, and now with this new uh, renewable energy coming ashore here, I see as, as us having an, an environmental side, whether it's teaching or participating or having cheap energy or good clean energy, as environment's going to be one of the keys to the future success in our island. Well, as uh, Cape Bretoners, there's no doubt we use our vehicles a lot, and, and, and so you see that the fuel price is having a big effect. The other thing, of course, we live so far away from the centers, uh, you know, in, in Central North America, so a lot of our food is being brought in, and, you know, whether it's, whether it's the price of food or it's, or it's the cost of taking the kids to hockey, it's, it's being felt. Uh, going door to door, the, the, 
everybody's going to get a it's going to get a bump on this. But the people that are really worried or that I am concerned about is the ones on fixed income. The people on fixed income, seniors, people going into a fixed pension, where the you know if if for instance fuel prices might be going up two or three percent in the next year or two. So, but food food is one of the biggest issues. Uh, that's what I'm hearing at the door. Um, you know. You can drive a little less, you can turn down the thermostat a little bit, but at the end of the day, you cannot eat less. And, 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 and the forecast is not good for the price of food. Um, being on the Agriculture Committee, I worked in underdeveloped countries, uh, I know the situation, I was on the Foreign Affairs Committee, and what, what the reality is, we could see 10 to 20 percent increase in food over the next 10 years. Now, how do people deal with that? Um, Besides, we're going to have to help them with a guaranteed income supplement for seniors. But I think, uh, you know, what we got to do is produce more food locally. I know how to produce food locally and what our, pro our policies put in place right now for uh, local food production. I think that's one of our keys to help bring down the food prices and have good, fresh local produce uh, available to people here in Cape Breton. Well, there's no doubt in order for us to keep our tax base, to keep our schools open, our churches open, we are going to need more young people to stay here. Um, there's, I think there's a couple ways we can do that. I think we have to start opening up to more immigration here. I know that some of the provinces are doing a better job. I know Quebec is doing a better job in immigration than we are here in Nova Scotia. But here in Cape Breton, we, are, we have always prided ourselves in here in Cape Breton being more very multi multicultural. I mean, when you look at all the different nationalities that came to this, to, to this island, I think one of the things is we got to encourage immigration here at Cape Breton. But the other thing is to keep get young people to stay here or to come back. And I see more young people coming back and being creative and doing things here. But I think we have to we have to help them match make the skills they have or what the, what the, the skills that are going to be needed. I think it's very important if we're going to need more health care workers in, in, in the next 20 years in Cape Breton, we're going to have to encourage young people to take, take health care profession. We have to kind of match the, the professions are going to be here, whether it's tourism, clean energy, but I think we have to start encouraging our young people that are in school now, if they want to, if they want to stay in Cape Breton and they can, is to match make the skills that are going to be needed in this area to what they are taking in school. And that's, I think that's going to be a big part of this, and they'll be able to stay here. Okay, finally, thank you very much on behalf of JCIK Breton and the youth. Encourage to go out and vote. Well, what encouraged me to vote was my parents couldn't vote for five years when they were in the war years in the Netherlands, in Europe, during the Hitler time. Now, I know you could say, well, that's a remote time and, and, and place, but I think when we look at what people are fighting for, young people are fighting and giving up their lives in the Middle East now to get democracy, and we got to stop and say, look, look what they're fighting for and putting their lives up for democracy. And the only way to have true democracy is to vote. I don't believe we should have a system like Australia where, you know, you don't, if you don't vote, you don't get your driver's license. I don't think we have to do that. I think, I think there's a move afoot right now. There, we're going to be pleasantly surprised at the turnout this time around with young people going to the polls. They're watching it. This is one of the most important elections. It's going to be very important to them because it's going to set the table how Canadian society is going to be in the next couple decades. They're going to be engaged this time. I think they're definitely, with all, all the different communications out there, they're watching what's happening in the Middle East and how other people are f fighting for democracies. I think we're going to be pleasantly surprised with the turnout of the votes, and not only that, the engagement that's taking place right now in setting policy forward on how this our society is going to be formed in, in the upcoming decades.